Okay, within this tutorial, I'm going to break this painting down into easy steps so that you can follow along and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I said in the intro, I'm going to break this down into easy to follow steps within the app Procreate. So you learn about the painting techniques as well as the app. Now, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still achieve some success as well. But within Procreate, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. And the color profile is the sRGB, the code that ends in 2.1. And again, it's on the list by default within Procreate. In terms of the brushes, I'm only going to be using the free brushes that come with the app Procreate. So within our airbrushing, I'm going to use the soft brush, maybe the medium hard brush. Within artistic, I'm going to be using the Aurora brush, possibly the leatherwood brush too. And within luminance, I'm going to be using the light pen brush. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected a color palette, which is quite a limited color palette. And each of these colors has a code linked to it. So if you go here within the colors, Go to the value section you'll notice that each color has what we call a hexadecimal code attached to it all you need to do is type the code into this area press enter the color that you've typed in will appear up here and then you can tap it together yourself and create your own color palette and so each of these codes is down in the video description take a note of them and type them in here or next to those codes is a link that takes you to my patreon page and you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time and then that obviously is the place where you can go and gain access to exclusive content and support this channel too. And with all of that said and done, let's go to our first layer, go to our colors. First color, we're gonna to drag to flood fill the whole canvas with that base color. I'm gonna create a new layer, layer two, go to my colors. I'm going to use the airbrushing soft brush. I'm gonna put it up to 50% size and 100% opacity. And we're just going to eliminate that bottom section. All of this is going to be darker, maybe up to about there. I'm going to go to the brush and just reduce it down to about 20% size, still at 100% opacity. I'm just going to shut down some of the areas up here and some of the areas up here too. It just reduces this area that we're going to add some tree textures. So we don't need to do tree details across the whole canvas that way. I might as well stay on the same layer. I'm going to swap brushes to the medium brush with an airbrushing, put it down to 2% size. And I'm not going to have it at quite 100% this time. I'm going to have it more like about 50. And we're just going to do some tree trunks. Not all of them going completely off the top of the canvas. I think ones when we get to the side over here, perhaps go all the way up. But then as we start to get towards the center, maybe ones that don't quite make it all the way. Perhaps we'll turn the size of that brush down a little bit as we get towards the center. They're going to be trees that are slightly further away. So I'm going to put it down to 1%. I'm also going to reduce that 50% down to about 30. So that will do initially. Okay, I'm going to create a new layer, layer three. I'm going to go to the brushes, artistic, Aurora brush. I'm going to reset it and then I'll show you how I'm going to amend it. So I'm going to tap on it again and the spacing are going to keep the same. Sometimes I do change that, but I'm only going to change the color dynamics this time. So normally it would set. So normally it would be set to 16%, which means that the hue shifts and changes a little bit. I don't want that at all. So I'm going to put it down to none and that will do. I'm setting it to not quite the bottom end of 2%, just a little bit upwards of that and about 70% opacity. And I'll start with some of the tree trunks that we can see here really clearly and I'm just going to rock to left and then to the right leaving some gaps as we go now this is going to be pretty much a background detail so although it, it is an important part of the, the picture it's not something that really we're going to scrutinize once we get the rest of the details in place so I'm just left and right adding some of this texture you can scribble it in quite a bit in fact in fact let's put that up from 70 let's put it up a bit higher about 80 and as we get further down perhaps we're just getting a little bit more condensing together, less light showing through, and then eventually it will just merge down with the rest of the color on the layer underneath. So really it's only that top detail that we're concerning ourselves with. So again, I'm just gonna rock left and right. I'm keeping generally a bit of a, a curve to this. So there's a tree trunk. We're, I'm going roughly with this 
type of shape. But I'm obviously fragmenting it, breaking it up. And then when they get to certain points, you get one tree that just kind of collides and crashes into another. And then they don't really become separate at all, they just become one shape. And this one's a lot taller or nearer to us anyway. Again, you don't need to really agonize over this. This is quite a quick process. Allow it to be a little bit rough and that's perfectly fine. What we'll do for that top corner. I'm just going to do the same thing moving across. I do think leaving some gaps is important, however. So not every part of the tree of every tree is going to be really densely packed or uniformly separated with the branches either. So the occasional sort of so the occasional sparse empty area is probably a good way of going. So the occasional sparse area on a tree is, is quite a nice thing to think about. When we get to the lower part, it's really easy to scribble it in. Okay, once I got so far, I'm actually going to take that layer and I'm going to slide and duplicate. It does make them all a lot darker and that's fine. I'm also going to tap on the top version, merge down. I'm going to slide and duplicate it again. And on the bottom version, I'm going to go to the transform. I'm going to move it perhaps over here, maybe flip it horizontally, move it down into this area so that the top parts are a little bit lower, like so. I'm then going to go to the little N on that layer and just slide it backwards and just make some of them disappear a little bit. Now if you've got any strange anomalies like this then just go in with the eraser, hard brush, 100%, doesn't matter on the size, just remove some of the ones that aren't quite helping. But you can see I've created some there that are just subtly in there, just look a little bit more knocked back, that's perfect. I'm going to take the top version, merge it down again and I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur them in just into the 3% just to soften them slightly. I'm then going to create a layer on top. Go to my brushes. I'm going to use the airbrushing soft brush. Go to my colors. I'm going to go back to the first color that we were using on the top row. I need to control it. So about 10% size and about 10% opacity too. And I'm just going to use this. In fact, that's too much. Dial it back even from 10 is a bit strong, so about 5. I want to be able to control this, do it subtly, gradually. But certainly in the centre area, I'm going to start knocking them back. Top edges of the trees, I just want to knock them back, soften them in. Perhaps I'll increase the size of the brush up to about 20. Soften them in somewhat more. Go into these top edges and just reduce the effect. I'm going to move this across this whole area to about halfway. I'm going to reduce it back down again. Maybe this time to about 5% size and back up to about 10% opacity. And just at the very top edges of some of these trees, I just want to make sure that the, the very top edge is just a little bit more softened in and then also in the center area just push those ones back there a little bit further away perhaps i'll take that layer adjustments gaussian blur and just blur it in somewhat about the 20 percent going to create a layer on top I'm going to go back to the airbrushing maybe the medium hard brush for this i'm going to go back to the second color I'm going to put it at around 3% size and 100% opacity. And just from this lower area, I'm going to do a couple of trees that are just cutting through. So slightly broader at the base, but not significantly more. 
Perhaps it just kicks out a little bit. And maybe one just leans in here a little bit. Maybe that lean is a bit too much. And then I'm going to reduce the size of the brush down to the lowest part of 2%. Zoom in a touch. And we're just going to have some branches that stick out kind of randomly. Different angles, don't worry about it too much. I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 20%. Maybe they're just suggestions of more things here in the background that are growing as well. Don't need to be overly articulated or detailed, just a suggestion of things. I'm going to go in onto that layer with the eraser set to airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to have it set to about 5% size, really low, at around 10%. And I'm just going to use that to soften that in in places. I'm going to keep it a little bit kind of haphazard. So maybe there's some mist that's just wafting in front of it in some areas more than others, just to slightly break that up a little bit. Maybe near the top, a little bit more hazy, just a hint. Okay, I'll create a new layer. And this layer, I'm gonna tap on the end. I'm gonna turn the opacity down to about 20%. And I'm gonna put the opacity on the brush up to 100%. I'm gonna keep it 2% size. And we're gonna stay on the second color with the medium hard brush within airbrushing. And that just allows me to add some silhouettes, some rocks, some of the land features there perhaps. We don't have a completely flat environment. Quite an easy step. We can then go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur that in a bit, represent. I'm going to keep this on separate layers. So I'm going to create a new layer, layer seven. Perhaps going to turn the opacity of that layer down to about 40. I'm going to go in with the third color this time. Still the same brush, so the medium hard brush, 2% size, just a little bit back from 100, maybe 70. And we can start to just add some rocks other things that are just a little bit closer again. Again, we don't need to be overly neat. I'm just scribbling in some shapes, some boulders, some stones. I'm going to do a really central feature here anyway, so I don't really care about that area. It's more just the edges and these side areas. I'm just building up the texture piece by piece. Create a new layer layer eight and we'll do the same thing again but this time i'm not going to reduce the opacity of the layer so we're still on the same brush which is the medium hard brush with an airbrushing we're still on the third color still at about two percent size and about 70 percent opacity which is going to look significantly darker now and i just want to build in a few stones that are more prominent but slightly flatter on the, the bottom when they hit the ground and then we can create some nice shape them to them at the top edge Again, not a massive amount of care with this, just kind of getting them in there to begin with. Perhaps that one is going to be a little bit too close to the center, so let's try that somewhere more over here. Maybe I want to go for the fourth color, stay on the same layer, and we're going to really start putting in some more foreground shapes. I'm going to put the size up to 4%, just start to blot them in now. Large, chunkier shapes, not really taking a great deal of care over them at all, just getting some chunkier objects in there. I'm going to go onto that layer, tap on the alpha lock, which means we'll see a little checkerboard pattern appear on the thumbnail. If we go to a lighter color, we'll go to the next color and we add that on top. It's only going to add it to the inside of the stone shapes. Probably not the best color to pick because it looks just like the background. Pick something like the red. See, I can only add it to the inside of the rock shapes. And we've got some of this light and we're gonna have some stones that are wet and in the kind of water environment. So they're gonna reflect back some of that light. So perhaps I'll go to the medium brush, 2% size, 30% opacity on this end color here. And just think about where the light is coming from, how it's gonna hit certain areas of a rock compared to others. 
And it is quite a, a significantly lighter color, so maybe I'll dial it back to the next one initially. But we'll use a combination of the two. So it's certainly going to hit the top edge. All right, let's go back again. I was right with that first color. It just it looks very similar to the, the base color, but we're going to change the water color anyway. I can just go over the top, some of these rock shapes, give them a little bit of reflecting back the light, a sense that they are 3D shapes. Again, doesn't need to be something we spend a huge amount of time on. Sometimes with these things, simpler is, is better. So I'll create a nice top edge. I'm having a side here where, you know, if it's angled down, all of a sudden that area could be in shadow. So I'm not adding the, the light highlights to every part. It's important to leave some bits dark. You can allow yourself to be a bit haphazard with this. Just think about the shadow area, the lights coming from up here. So this top edge, anything that's facing that area is certainly going to catch the light more. It's also going to catch the light of the other things that we're going to have in our scene as well. We'll just lay in the foundation before we add any secondary light sources. We're just getting the main light for the scene. And I'm going to turn that up to 3% size. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go in with this color on the very end with perhaps the soft brush with an airbrushing, 2% size and about 10% opacity. And I just want to start building in some ripples at this point. Maybe, in fact, I ought to put that underneath where the rocks are. So now I can have it interplaying with the rocks, but it's not going to overlap. I just want some shapes here that are just suggestive of water. Perhaps we can turn that down 2% size, put it up to 20% opacity, zoom in a touch, and we can have highlight that just hugs around the stone. Bring in some dashes and anomalies on this water. And I'm also going to go in with a dark color. So I'm going to go in with perhaps this third color, which if I create a new layer and put it underneath the white colors, that's perhaps a good place to start. So I'm going to put this up to 5% size, 40% opacity with this darker color, and just start to darken up some of this area here. And I'm also going to go in with the black but I probably need to reduce that down to about 20%. And we're going to get the point where the rocks and the water, you know, the rocks create a shadow and a reflection of themselves in that dark color. So separation between the rocks and the, the water isn't going to be necessarily very clear. Turn that down 3%, turn it down to 10% on the opacity too. As we come up here, we'll just have that effect starting to lessen. Okay, I'm going to spend too long on the water at this point because we're going to add such a strong light feature in now, it's going to disrupt everything anyway. Okay, we're going to add a new layer, layer 11. I'm going to change the blend mode to add. I'm going to go to the wrench symbol. We're going to turn on the drawing guide. Now I've got it set to a 2D grid. But we're going to change that. We're going to go to edit drawing guide, perspective, and I'm going to draw put in a couple of points of perspective. Now I'm going to put them quite low down. I'm not going to put them in the center where the horizon line is. I'm going to put one lower down there and it's created a horizontal line there that goes across. I'm going to try and match it along that line. I'm also going to put on the assisted drawing. I'm going to go to the luminance light pen and I'm going for this bright red color. Zoom in a touch. Now it's impossible to draw in a squiggle or anything other than a line that fits at least parallel with one of the perspective line grids or grid lines rather. So I'm going to spot, start with the lowest point. So roughly where the middle of the canvas is, start with the point, draw it up to where I want the top of the cube to be, then draw a line down, then draw a line down from the next corner. Try and judge where it probably is likely to hit. Doesn't quite match up. Easy enough just to do a little bridge. Then I'm going to take that layer and duplicate it, transform, flip it horizontally, move it across. If it doesn't quite match up, maybe just spend the time making sure it's as perfectly aligned as you can get it. 
then top version merge down so that's all on one layer. I'm also going to create a new layer, change the blend mode again to add, tap on it again and put on drawing assist and we're going to zoom in a touch, go from this corner, try and keep the pressure consistent so you're not overly pressing it, stop when you hit the middle, same from this corner, stop when you hit the middle, they're slightly misaligned, I'm not going to overly worry about that, try again, no, still no better but I'm not going to have a problem with that because I'm going to slightly subdue those lines in the back there anyway. So that's our cube shape. I'm going to go back to the drawing assist, turn off the drawing guide, go back to my layers, tap on it, turn off the drawing assist, both those versions. Probably going to take the top version now, merge it down, slide and duplicate that layer, the bottom version, I'm going to go to the transform, flip it vertically, bring it down, try and keep it lined up. I want a little bit of a separation between the original and the reflected version, so not too big a gap though, maybe about there. Now on the reflected version, which is the bottom one, we're gonna go with the adjustments, liquify. We're gonna put the size of the push setting within liquify to 5% and 100% pressure. Now if you deselect, it instantly goes off. So you need to keep it selected. You have to stay within that area. And I'm just going to move it left and right. I'm just going to create some initial distortions, which is just creating that initial kind of jitter. And then I'll add some bigger ones in next as well. Now some of this I'm going to erase. So anywhere where we've got the rocks is going to disappear anyway. I'll zoom in a touch so you can really see what I'm doing. Just the first stage in distorting it, start some little ripple interruptions. It's not really done much to the lines that go at different angles, but we can add them there as well. So a little bit. Then we can change the size to 10%. And as we come further down, we can start to just further push and disrupt these as well. Maybe bigger in fact, let's go for 20%. It's really quite dramatic. Back down touch maybe 15 just call keep alternating it until we start to get some kind of effect that we think is working that's starting the process for us let's deselect that perhaps i'll also go to the motion blur and just take that sideways a touch maybe about 10 percent that's another step in the process go to the eraser set to the soft brush 100 percent 2% size and obviously we've got stones underneath here so we don't want it reflected when there's an actual object there. We only want it reflecting in the water so we can remove that and that's another stage. We probably want a slight foreshortening of it too so we can go to the transform, freeform and just pinch it up a little bit like so. Perhaps then we could use the smudge hard brush 2% size, 100% opacity and just extend some of these lines down a little bit more so they do meet the rock again. We absolutely want it to be kind of fragmented here anyway. And we can continue to use this smudge tool just to kind of mush it in more. And we're going to do something similar up here. We want to lose those absolute reflection points. Push it in and around when it gets lower down here. I'm going to go to the top cube with our eraser set to the soft brush but I'm going to turn it down to about 30% strength and about 2% opacity and I just want to subtly subdue some of these background lines just a bit just to push them further back I want those to look more like they're in the distance compared to these front edges we're going to create a new layer, change the end to add. I'm going to go to my airbrushing, soft brush, stay on that same vibrant red. I'm going to put it to 2% size, 10% opacity. And I'm going to start bringing in a really vibrant glow between these two areas. So it's just ramping up the drama, especially in that gap between the two. 
I'm also going to go for this stretched out diamond shape too, bottom edge and the reflection of it. I'm going to put the size up to 10%, just have that glowing in the overall area as well. Extend that across. I'm going to change to the color of the first color on the bottom row. Turn it down to 5%, bring some of that pink in. Maybe just start to think about coloring in the edges of this or the different sides of this cube a little bit more. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go, I'm actually going to add another brush to the brushes that I intended to use. I'm going to go to Vintage Rad Brush, just the default settings for it. I'm going to go to the third color on the top row. Brush size at around 20 and strength at around 15. I'm just going to carefully just start to add some shapes to the kind of sides of this cube. Just give it a bit of texture so it's not completely flat and empty. Gives it a bit more character. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to change the blend mode to add. Again, I'm going to go in with the vintage rad brush. I'm going to pick maybe this second color. 20% size, 15% opacity. And I'm just going to add more of this. I'm going to go back to layer 13. I'm going to go in with this brightest pink with the airbrushing soft brush, 4% size, 20% opacity. And I'm just going to, in this bottom area, really ramp up this light as well. So we've got a bit here. So the main leading edge of our front shape is there to there. In fact, let's go and highlight that a little bit more. So it's on this layer. But another way of doing that would be to simply go to that layer with the luminance light pen on the original red color we were using it should be set to the first settings we did before and now it's not got drawing assist on so it will wobble so we just need to hold it let it snap to a straight line and we've just exaggerated that leading edge a little bit more and we could do the same down here get it to the corners snap or hold so it snaps like so and we're just making them a little bit more pronounced back to layer 13 back with the airbrushing soft brush and this pink and I'm just building in more of this glow underneath. I think I'd like to go in with on layer 13 with the luminance light pen set to that original red. Let's just zoom in and try some more things. So perhaps 100% is a bit strong. Put it down to 70. Maybe we get to a certain point. Maybe we could just create some kind of bridge to connect them. Why not? And like then in this area, we're going to have ripples and other distortions. Let's change colors to this darker red. Turn it down even more, 40%. I'm going to go to the reflection, which is layer 11. I'm going to go in with the smudge tool set to the hard brush with an airbrushing. Whoops. Hard brush, 2% size, 100% opacity, and I feel like we just need to interrupt some of these things, some of these lines. Perhaps we can just interrupt that line underneath there, maybe. I'm going to go to the top layer, create a new layer. I'm going to go in with my airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to use the first color on the bottom row to begin with. 2% size, 20% opacity, and we need to start adding the impact on some of these stones. So perhaps 2% is just too much, 1% size, and we can just use the rocks that are immediately facing and naturally they're gonna reflect a lot of that light back. I'll have to go for the next color. And there might be areas where we don't, simply don't see the outline of the, the stone. All we're gonna see is the reflection of it because it gets bleached out in that glow generally. It doesn't take much to create that interaction between the environment and the original thing. Just, it definitely needs adding, but you don't need to overstate it. So just some reflected areas on this stone. And then on this one. Just tracing along the top edge. Obviously it's right there. You're going to see it more affecting this one than you will some of, some of the rocks over there, perhaps.
And again, we can just add some noise in the water there. We don't necessarily need to see the, the shadow, the dark side of the thing that is reflecting back the light. We do some lines just generally across. Turn it down to 10%, up to 2%. And yet we can just create some extra light that's just shimmering in this water. So you already see I'm, I'm moving quickly across, just adding it in. Move over here, let's ramp it up a little bit more there. Turn it back down, 1%. We don't really need to add much to the trees, just a few dashes in there, just gives the slightest hint, really no more than that. A few more rocks back here perhaps, perhaps up to the 2%. Going back to layer 13, back in with the red and the soft brush still, 2% size, 10% opacity. Perhaps a little bit bigger actually, let's put up to 3%. I just want to bring the glow from the bottom of the cube creeping up a little bit more. Maybe the next to it, that bluey purple. Maybe we can just add a hint of that cooler colour at the top. Back to the red colour, more of it in the reflection too. Back in with the pink. In the center area especially maybe we'll just turn it up 20 something percent really channel it in here i like that glow let's keep ramping it up back to the very top or let's actually go backwards we had layer 19 that had some highlights in there let's go in with the color on the end of the bottom row soft brush two percent size 20 percent opacity let's just continue to add some of these light shapes in there too right, a bit more contrast remember this layer was underneath the rock so we can't damage or interrupt them too much. Turn it down 1%. A few more dashes of this at the side. Back up 3%. Back up to 13. Just a couple more things in the water. So going with the pink. Soft brush. 1% size, 50% opacity, so really strong. Just a couple of things there. I can just go over some points of light if I want to make more of them. Maybe just add some dots along the way, just to vary up the intensity of it. So I just want to go into this leading edge here that, that mirrors that one in the reflection. So I'm just going to go to the light pen, and luminance, the red again, 80% size or so, 60% opacity, and yeah, just add just ramp it up subtly, maybe just the point there, for example, and ramp it up a little bit, not too much. Okay, I'm gonna leave that tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed watching and maybe even following along. If you've enjoyed this, then I've also done a landscape in a jar, which I think you might also find interesting. Thanks so much for watching. See you back here soon.